Hello, so we are back, but this time let's speak about the thermal paste. The thermal paste is used on a processor, like a bridge, it's acting like a bridge between the processor and the heatsink, and it's meant to send the heat from the processor to the heatsink. There are two types of thermal paste. We have the regular one, which most of the laptops or the computers, they are using the, the regular thermal paste. And we have liquid metal, yeah, it's gallium-based liquid metal. But the difference between a liquid metal and a regular thermal paste is 10 times. So the liquid metal is 10 times better. It will get you a better heat transfer compared with a regular thermal paste. Now you will ask, sorry, but why not every laptop manufacturer is using liquid metal? Because the high-end laptops, they are using liquid metal, like how we've seen on the game consoles. Uh, it's a little bit more complicated, and it's a little bit more dangerous to use liquid metal on, uh, on a processor. Last week I had a laptop with liquid metal split on the motherboard. So liquid metal is conductive. It will conduce the electricity. That means if it goes on the motherboard, it will short your motherboard. So uh, today's video it's about let's see how we can apply uh, liquid metal on a on a processor in a safe way. Yeah. So what do we have here? We have my uh, my laptop here. Uh, we can uh, we can have a look. We can benchmark a little bit to see the difference between a normal ter regular thermal paste and the liquid metal thermal paste. Yeah. So what we have here, we have a running laptop. It's a 11 gen processor. We have RTX 3060. Now, there are a lot of people they don't know exactly how the laptop works. And you think, okay, if I have 11 gen, should perform like a 11 gen uh, desktop uh, PC, which is not true. Same with the graphics. So on a laptop, like on any laptop, uh, the laptops are like a nuclear reactor. Yeah, everything in this laptop is spinning around the heat. Yeah, so it's not about the power because many people they believe okay, it's a power. Uh, that's why we don't have more performance. We, we don't have enough power, but it's not. It's all about the heat. Yeah, so everything will be regulated on your laptop based on the heat. Yeah like uh, the processor voltage, like the processor uh, clock, like the processor load. Yeah, Everything is spinning around the heat. So we have a monitor here. We can monitorize the temperatures. Yeah, like we can see the max temperature and the minimal temperature and the clock. And you can see the clock on my laptop is like 4.5 gigahertz, nearly 4.6 gigahertz. Yeah. Because that's what you bought. That's what you pay for. You pay for a processor to 4.6 gigahertz, right? Okay. Now let's start stressing the stressing the CPU. I mean loading with. You can load with a game, with uh, anything. You can load a processor. So I'll use a program to load the processor. And uh, you will see, pay attention on the temperature. The temperature is going up. The clock starting going down. Of 88 degrees, 90. When the temp when the when the processor, sorry, when the processor uh, temperature is reaching only 95, it will start limiting the clock. That's how the laptop it will cool down itself by limiting the clock. And you can see we have 93 degrees, and the clock it will start dropping down soon as the temperature is going up. So it's, it's trying to keep a balance between the temperature and the clock. So we have 91, 93, and the system is playing with the clock around 3 gig, 2.5, sometimes 4.1. But soon as he figured out actually where is the balance, he will, uh, he will set up a, a, a stable frequency. So we have 95, the system reached 95 degrees. Uh, what it will do, it will limit the clock even more. The processor is low like 100%. And 
and the clock became stable around 3.3 gigahertz 3.3 3.4 but as soon as it's getting more hot i mean not only the heat sink but even the the motherboard it will drop the clock even more so you can see now 2.9 3.1 2.8 so that's the cash. That's something which a manufacturer it will not tell you. I mean, you pay for a 4.6 gigahertz processor, but you can use, you can use only like 3 gigahertz from that processor because of the heat. Because the system cannot get rid of the heat. Okay, so let's do a test because we're going to replace the, the thermal paste. I mean, I didn't even try, I didn't even try to stress the graphics. I mean, I can stress the graphics. We can do it and it's even worse. Yeah. So now the heatsink, it's used by the CPU and by the GPU. And the things will start going even bad, even worse. So the clock, it will go even lower on the processor. Because now you have two chips using the same heatsink. 2.8, 2.9, and it will go even lower. Now, before we start the, to replace the thermal paste, let's do a test, okay? Let's benchmark. Uh, let's benchmark the, the laptop before we replace the test, uh, the replace the paste, and we, we are benchmarking the laptop after we replace the test, yeah? CPU, let's run the test. Run the test. Let's see what uh, what number we are getting now before we are replacing the thermal paste. The CPU is here still hitting 95 degrees. So that means our limit is on the temperature. Yeah, because it is another limit, the power. But you will not the, the the CPU it will not reach that uh, that limit the power because it has an issue with the temperature. And you will think sorry, okay, but still we have normal thermal paste, yeah. But if I tell you the temperature difference between the processor and the heatsink is around 10, 15 degrees, you'll not believe me. <laughs> so actually, after we will be replacing this uh, thermal paste with the uh, liquid metal. It will be a huge, a tremendous difference. Yeah. Let's wait for the test. Let's see the numbers, and after that, we're gonna we're gonna replace the the thermal paste. The CPU is still at the limit, and the number we are getting is nineteen two seven two. Okay, you can see the number. So that's with the, with the actual thermal paste. Now let's replace it with liquid metal and see if it's any difference. Okay, so we have a nice board. We have GPU, CPU. Let's take out the screws. So the heatsink is out. We can see the laptop has thermal paste. So all we have to do is to clean it and replace with liquid metal. Okay, so everything is clean, yeah? First, let's start with the processor, okay? Let's go under the microscope just to understand uh, how, much, uh, how much liquid metal do you need on a chip. Okay, so you can see the processor in the, in the picture, and uh, you can see the surface is far to be like a perfect uh, straight surface. That's why we need something like um, a bridge between the processor and the heatsink. Now I will add liquid metal. You need just a little bit, just a little bit. Okay, not that. That's 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 a lot. You don't need that much, yeah. So you can suck it back. That should be enough. Now you can get a cotton. Uh,
cotton bud, okay, like a normal cotton bud, and let's start and spreading the liquid metal. You see, this is even too much, yeah? Just to understand how a little you need. So I will use this on the graphic chip. You have to understand if this is going wrong, uh, it's no way to come back. I mean, I had jobs. You remember we had like the, t the liquid metal goes under the under the graphic uh, memory or under the processor and it's not much what you can do I mean, sometimes it cannot it cannot be fixed we cannot fix this kind of faults so the gpu so the gpu is ready okay so the gpu is ready and the cpu is ready and here it's a little bit too much but i think we'll be fine Keep in mind, you cannot do something like that if you have uh, aluminum heatsink. You can do it with copper, no, not with aluminum. Now we have the GPU and the CPU with the liquid metal. And that should be okay. So we have on the both GPU and CPU and here. Okay. So you have to understand that cannot you have to put a little bit. You can't put more because if the liquid metal goes on the motherboard, then you'll have problems and issues. Okay, so everything is on place. Liquid metal we have there. Now let's put back everything and test. Now everything is on place. Let's see. So how the laptop will perform now with a new thermal paste? Let's run the test. Pay attention on the temperature. Okay. Pay attention on the temperatures. Do you see the CPU going back to 90, 95, 96? Because I don't. Let's finish and we're going to stress the CPU to see if it's going back to 95. You remember we have the red, uh, the red numbers there. That means the processor reached 95. 20, 236. It's kind of a big leap, right? I mean, the score is better. Now let's test again. Now let's stress the CPU. Pay attention on the temperature. Yeah. 
Remember when I told you before we start, actually, with a normal thermal paste, the difference between the CPU temperature and the heat sink is like 10, 15 degrees. So check now. Remember the numbers was red here, was 95. Now we have like 80 and something. So in this moment, the processor is not limited by the temperature. And you can see the clock, the, the system, it will keep the clock higher just because, just because the processor hasn't reached the, the max limit. So we are stressing the CPU same like before, same like before. The CPU is 100% loaded, yeah? But my temperature is not going to the limit, to this limit, which was 97 last test, before we replaced the thermal paste. And the, my clock is spinning higher than before, you remember? Can we start even the graphic to stress, start the, stress the, 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 the system even more? Yes, we can. So you have like 85, 86, I see an 87, but that's all. And my clock is higher compared with before. Now we can start stressing the, even with the, with the GPU, start. The GPU is loaded. So in this moment, check on the temperature, yeah? You see now it's like 80, 81 because the system reach the power point, okay? Where actually everything is limited by the power, not by the temperature. Yeah, that's, that's the point. When actually your uh, processor, it will not reach the, the temperature limit where he has to limit the clock. Pretty bit beautiful. I mean, it's a very, very big improvement. I, hasn't, I haven't seen here run numbers, yeah? Let's stop the GPU. Let's put all the pressure on the CPU. Eighty-nine, ninety. I can see ninety. I can see ninety. Ninety-one, ninety-two. Even ninety-three. But the clock is higher. Yeah. So if the processor is it if is not reaching the max this ninety-seven, the system it will push the clock up. Yeah. So that's how the how a laptop is working. So he will try to keep the everything at max possible. But like how I said before, soon as the processor reaches the limit, it will uh, it will lower the clock. This is a big improvement. You remember what we seen here last time was only around ninety five. That's what the liquid matter thermal paste it will do it's a big improvement i told you i told you like 10 15 degrees better of course i cannot recommend this and i cannot be responsible if you try to do it on your laptop that's why we are uh, we are having customers coming to the shop only for this only to replace the normal ther thermal paste with a uh, liquid metal but if you put just a little bit, nothing wrong can happen, yeah? But you have to put a little bit, yeah? There should not be, should not be liquid metal floating on your uh, CPU, processor, or heatsink. So we are still stressing the CPU and the temperature is still around 95 degrees. This is, this is what I call a big improvement. Now, a few years ago, I made a video, okay, and I will show you. This video was a good video, but never took off. I mean, uh, it was a poor uh, performing video. But this is an example how you can uh, basically overclock, like, like on this example, I was overclocking a MacBook 
just by yeah just by give me one second just by using a thermal pad to send the heat from the processor and uh, GPU to the back case to the metal case and uh, that was the that was that was a thing I mean we test I test on the video so the max clock on that MacBook was like 10 seconds if I remember I don't remember exactly it was like 10 seconds max clock yeah and after 10 seconds the MacBook it will lower the clock then using just a thermal pad to send the heat from the processor to the back case we double the time basically we double the time i mean i've reached like 20 seconds or 30 seconds i don't remember exactly on the video but just by getting rid of the heat yeah we double the performance of that macbook always you have to think how you can get rid of the heat even on this case we have a metal case on the back we can easily use a pad to send the heat away from the processor and because of that you can keep the clock higher okay so i'll stop now thank you for watching like and subscribe if you like the video and uh, see you on the next one bye